The date was November 6th, 2021, and it was high noon as we passed over the Red Sea on descent into Cairo on leg four of the trip between Alice Springs, Australia, and Toulouse, France. Ava and I had slept in actual beds exactly once since we left home on November 2nd, and that happened in Oman on the last leg. Four days into this long haul, and the end of the mission was beginning to appear on the horizon. Not literally, of course, because we still had to fuel up in Egypt, fly across the Mediterranean Sea, across the length of Italy, and across the south of France before we got to Tarbes. The airplane, an Airbus A320, was on its way to maintenance to be bridged to a new operator before going into service in Europe. This maintenance was scheduled in Francazol, a small satellite airport just a few kilometers south of Toulouse. Before we could land there, however, we had to make a custom stop in Tarbes, which is located east in the foothills of the Pyrenees Mountains between France and Spain. Cairo is just another fuel stop. They also delivered us a couple of pizzas, which were cold, so I put a few slices in the aft galley oven just before fueling. I loaded 14 tons of fuel onto the airplane, which amounted to just under 4,500 gallons of Jet A. I, uh, I put pizza in the oven and then we had the fuel and I forgot about it and I might have put it on too long. Oh shit. Pizza was a little toasty but edible. I didn't make the same mistake with the rest of the pie. Catering is a critical piece of the puzzle when putting together a long haul ferry, especially these days when our ability to food shop in some locations is limited due to travel restrictions. Staying nourished and hydrated is very important when pulling the longest of days. It's important we have enough food and water not only to make it to our next location, but sometimes enough reserves to cover us if a tech stop fails to remember to order us food, or worse, if we accidentally dump a tray of food on the floor because of turbulence or improperly secured galley carts. This happens more than you'd think. Here's the three-layer catering plan we typically utilize. Layer one, reserves. This generally consists of a bag of snacks, Protein bars, candy, nuts, jerky, stuff like that. I often stock this bag at home from the grocery store or gas station, or from a shop at the departure airport if my bag space is limited. Reserves also include water and caffeinated beverages of some sort, but those have to be purchased at the departure station because, like everyone else, we also can't get liquids through security. Layer 2. Primary catering. There are two options here. The preferred option is self-catering, where we hit a grocery store and stock up for the whole trip at once, utilizing coolers and thermal bags. This is easy when a trip originates in the US or Canada. If a plane has chillers or ovens, it's really the best way. It generally costs about two or three hundred bucks and provides for a diverse selection. If unfeasible, we go to option two, which is actually catering from the ground handlers. This option is really a mixed bag of surprises and it can be very expensive. Sometimes this means being supplied by the same companies that cater passenger flights, and in those cases it's normally disgusting and super expensive, like $500 at one location. Other times, a local handler will go out and order food from a local restaurant, and this is better, especially when we lack ovens and chillers. There's good catering here. Indonesian catering. That's, um, well, we're not exactly sure. <laughs> Nice. And uh, then there's a, a bag of incredibly good spicy stuff. Um, that is sambal. Sambal. Yeah. This one. Yeah. So it kind of works like this. You just kind of dump it on the on the rice. And then there's a bag of green stuff. It's like chilies. And you just kind of mix it all in there together. I don't know how you ate it earlier. Let me get him in. <laughs> Here, you show him how I ate it earlier. Like a dog. <laughs> uh, uh. Keep your hands cleaner that way. <laughs> you like it just because but you want to. It's, it's a little easier to just grab it. Just grab it in. Look at him. Quite good, though. 
In some cases, were catered by BizJet FBOs. This is by far the priciest option, over 400 bucks a head sometimes, but normally it's high-end food. In Hawaii, we always do this because the food is so good. It's pretty good, the Hawaiian poke bowl. This is the best thing about coming through Honolulu. In fact, it's the reason we, it's the real reason that we didn't go to Anchorage. Yeah, it's not the de-icing, so. It's... <laughs> yes. It's improved, man. Not as good as last night, but it's still pretty damn good. <laughs> it's pretty hard to go back to anything after last night. Yeah. Must be control. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure this is why you. I just don't know if it's, it's just not COVID. What you eating there, Mike? I have no idea. I think it's a pork loin. But I have to eat it with two forks. That's good. No knives. <laughs> Just jab it with a fork and off yeah, it all. Fork, I'm gonna eat it like an animal. The final layer is the old standby, pizza. I don't care where you are in the world, there's always a pizza place that delivers and we can usually get it done on short notice. At this point, I consider myself a pizza connoisseur having eaten pies from almost every corner of the world. I'm from the northeast of the U.S. and my surname is Giordano, so the standard is high. But I can tell you some of the best pizza I've had has been from Italy and Malta, but shockingly, also Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and Keflavik, Iceland. Yes, Iceland. Crazy, right? Drone to cockpit. Go ahead. Captain, area clear now. You can start engine sequence two and one. Okay, start engine two, then engine number one. Area clear. Cairo pizza was just some garden variety Domino's or Pizza Hut type thing, so the fact that I charred it didn't make much difference in the end. It was food and we only had two legs to go. Stair 785, runway 05 center, runway heading, climb 3500 feet, clear for takeoff. Runway heading 3500 feet, clear for takeoff, 05 center, stair 785. By the time I scarfed the edible cardboard down, we had to move, so I forgot to change out the batteries and position the cameras. Unfortunately, I didn't capture the Cairo departure on this leg. It didn't matter though, because we were blessed with some amazing visibility out over the Mediterranean Sea. His leg took us initially due north out of Egypt over the Med, and then we turned west. We passed over the western end of Crete, just south of Toronto, where we flew pretty much over the entire country of Italy, exiting at the coastal area of northern Tuscany. In the summer of 2019, just before all the COVID madness started, I was able to take my family to Italy for part of the summer, where we spent a lot of time in Tuscany. I took it upon myself on this flight to try to locate our villa by cross-referencing the photo locations in my phone with our position. I was able to find Montepulciano, which made me very nostalgic. One of the greatest things about my job is that I get to scout out places to travel with my family. Then, after we've done the trip, I always reminisce about the places we've been, and when I overfly them, I satellite message my wife Avery with messages like, hey, let's go back to Tuscany. Travel is truly my passion, and I share it with my family. Even after circling the globe regularly for most of my adult life, it truly never gets old. along the coast transitioning from Genoa to Monaco looked spectacular. I flailed around the cockpit with every one of the cameras I had to try to find the best shot. Ironically, the ones I grabbed from my phone came out the best. Once reaching Marseille on the French Riviera, we started down for Tarbes. The weather held and Ava and I enjoyed the gorgeous views all the way to touchdown. Tarbes is a tower unlike Francazol, so we got a vector in and then Ava slammed it on. Sorry, buddy. Et bye bravo, on va arriver sur le secteur de travail et on 
on donnera dans le, dans le secteur entre 2000 et 4000 pieds. Monsieur Mac Bravo reste à l'écoute, nous on monte à 1031. 1031, on reste à l'écoute, Mac Bravo. Dominic 516, descend 3000 feet. Dominic 516, turn left, heading 245, intercept localizer, runway 20, clear data approach, Zulu, runway 20, call me back established. Okay, uh, heading 245, clear ILS. As we passed overhead the farm fields and vineyards on approach, I distinctly remember thinking how we truly overflew every possible type of landscape on this journey. Deserts, oceans, jungles, mountains, cities, and countryside. Pretty neat when you think about it that way. 100. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard, retard. Um, there must be 30 A380s here. That's insane. Man, there are... I don't know if I've ever seen so many A380s in one spot. No. Tarb is a lot of big iron on the ground. I've been there plenty, but I hadn't been since the aviation apocalypse started two years ago. Because there's, uh, there's some on the right, and there's like one, two, three, four, five, six Air France ones, and then one, two, three, four Etihad ones that I can see. There's an all white one, and then there's I think a that Lufthansa is an A380 as well. Yeah. A350s, A380s, some getting dismantled. Big wide-body jets just lined up on both sides, and in the distance, gorgeous mountains jutting up from huge green expanses of field. This place is an avgeek's paradise, and should definitely be on every plane spotter's bucket list. We didn't even get off the airplane in Tarb. A customs agent came on, looked at our passports, and left. We were on the ramp for all of 10 minutes before taxiing back out for departure. The final leg from Tarb to Francazol was 23 minutes long at a cruising altitude of 8,000 feet. This was like a Cessna 172 flight, but with an Airbus A320. Pretty cool way to cap off this epic journey. 516 from Alpha Intel backtrack runway 02, line up and report ready for departure. Okay, we'll backtrack uh, the 02 and line up and we'll report ready to make 516. The parallel taxiway along the runway in Tarb was filled with parked planes. Like Alice Springs and so many other airports, departing required a back taxi and turn around into position for takeoff. On the way out, I couldn't help but think what this would be like in an A380. <laughs> Hairy, to say the least. Conveniently, the scattered layer of clouds sat at around 6,500, so we were above them cruising along the countryside at 8. Below 10,000 feet, aircraft are all limited to 250 knots indicated, so that's why the 100-mile leg took us 20 minutes. At altitude, our true airspeed is normally 450 knots by comparison. As soon as we leveled off, it was time to get weather and brief the landing. Francazol is an uncontrolled field, so there was some debate between us about the IFR flight plan cancellation procedure after we landed. Non-towered airports are really common in the US, but certainly less so in Europe. In the end, I decided to just ask the approach controller if he would cancel it for us, and he pleasantly obliged. Let's 
six, uh, landing at discretion, runway two nine, no departure traffic, wind three four zero degrees, eight knots, max uh, one two. Okay, thank you. Will you cancel our uh, flight plan on the ground uh, once we land? Automatic five one two. Okay, Mr. IFL flight plan. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll need that cancel once we land. That's just the way we do it. Russia, no problem. We'll uh, do that. Thank you. We came to a stop and shut the engines down on the taxiway. The ground crew brought us the rest of the way under tow. Well, we're done. We're at Toulouse yeah. and uh, <laughs> we're smoked. Totally. It's been it's been it's been a long one. Yeah. I'm going uh, to Orly and then Lisbon and then home tomorrow. Ugh. I go Paris and then nonstop to Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a wrap for this one. Well, for now, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I rode coach from Toulouse to Orly and then had to overnight there before my connecting flight home the next day. Said and done, we were on the road for a week and I was well ready to have this one behind us. I did get a full week at home before heading back out on the road and these days, a week is an eternity. <laughs>